Let's bring in Natalie Tocci. She's a, a special advisor to the EU's High Representative for Foreign Affairs, joining us live from Rome. Europe caught between a rock and a hard place in this, aren't they? Well, absolutely, because, of course, as we know, the United States violated the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action already uh, a year and uh, three months ago. Uh, and basically, what mm. we have is a situation whereby one party has not been complying with the agreement, and this has obviously created incentive on the other side, meaning the Iranian side, uh, to do likewise. Now, what we have seen so far have basically been two sets, basically, of announcements by the Iranians, uh, the first saying that they would increase the amount of the amounts basically of stockpile uh, uh, stored uh, in, mm. in Iran beyond the allowed 300 kilos. And now what we've seen is a second announcement saying that they would increase uh, the level of enrichment from the 3.67 percent allowed in the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Now, both these sets of right. inconsistencies so far do not amount to a breach of the JCPOA, but they do certainly amount to an inconsistency with what the JCPOA had set out for Iran to do. Right. Uh, and Iran have given Europe 60 days to get their act together on, um, on, on easing uh, the sort of economic pressure the country is under, or they will breach for a third time. They will certainly increase the levels for a third time. Iran's foreign minister taking to Twitter, saying it was Bolton and Mr Netanyahu who killed the deal between the E3 and Iran in 2005 on zero enrichment, and now they're at it again, trying to kill the Iran nuclear deal. He says killing these deals will only lead to more enrichment and warns the world should learn its lesson. But the problem, the problem here is, as much as the US, the Europeans say, are to blame in all of this, having pulled out of the deal, uh, leaders, uh, well, statements certainly from Germany, from the UK and France are adamant that the Iranians must stop these threats at this point. One of these, uh, one of France's top diplomats is in Iran talking to the leaders there, to the leadership. What do you expect or hope can be achieved at this point? I think what can be achieved is basically, uh, well, obviously, ideally for the Iranians to move back to a full compliance with the agreement. Uh, but I think the most important achievement is that of ensuring that there is not a breach which basically signals that the Iranians are no longer committed to the JCPOA. Now, so far, an enrichment to 4.5 percent and an increase by a few uh, uh, tens of kilos more does not amount to that significant breach of an agreement. If, for instance, in six years, days time uh, the Iranians were to say boom you know we go up to 20 percent enrichment that would basically be mean that the Iranians would no longer be committed to the JCPOA so I think that the challenge now is that of persuading the Iranians mm. uh, to basically stick with the agreement but obviously what the Iranians want, will want to see from Europeans and mind you not only from Europeans I mean also from Russians and Chinese because let's not forget that they yeah. are also signatories to the JCPOA uh, their full compliance uh, with the agreement and the economic benefits that were promised to them under the agreement. Well, at some point, as you rightly point out, this all gets more than just symbolic. So the question is, what does happen next? I recently spoke with a senior Emirati official about the situation. He told me uh, the country's priority uh, is to de-escalate tensions in the Gulf. When I asked him about uh, Mr. Zarif's calls re uh, recently for a regional conference on all of this. He said, well, we're a bit a ways away from that, given the current situation. But he said that the Europeans do need to be part of finding a solution. So I put it to you again. I mean, you know, just how difficult a position is Europe in at this point? Well, it's obviously in a crucially difficult uh, position because on the one hand, uh, mm. as you know, the Europeans were basically, I mean, not only the three European countries that signed the JCPOA, but the European Union as such that essentially mediated uh, the agreement has seen and continues to see in this agreement a key pillar not only for non-proliferation so, and Middle East security, but basically for the international multilateral system uh, as a whole. So basically at the moment, really the, what the priority for Europeans is, is 
is that of ensuring that what they have proposed and formally agreed upon, meaning a special purpose vehicle to allow for financial transactions between uh, Iran, lawful financial transactions between Iran mm. and the European Union to take place, to actually Which deliver the first transactions. Right. Between the Which European will be Union such and Iran. low levels at this point. We're talking, you know, a few million dollars. We're not talking tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. You're it's just not going right. to be. That's just no. not going to be good enough no, for the Iranians, we're not talking is it? Well, I would say that it, if it actually there were to be some co concrete signals, small as they are, it would probably win us, if you like, some more time. I mean, this is, let's face it, a bit of a, bit of a race against time. It's crystal clear that uh, if... Uh, President Trump were to re-win uh, the uh, elections in 2020, uh, and if his current policy towards Iran were to remain unchanged, it's very difficult to imagine that the current architecture uh, of the Iran deal could actually be kept in place. But the question really is, can we do enough uh, basically to ensure that there is not that significant breach on the Iranian side in response to a significant breach on the US side. So can we do enough to basically allow the JCPOA uh, to survive? Mm. Not, we're not talking about years, we're basically talking months really. And that is the challenge, which is obviously a difficult challenge to meet, but it's certainly not an impossible one. Natalie, pleasure having you on. Thank you.